Good afternoon. We welcome all in attendance in the cathedral and everyone who is watching the live stream of this Mass. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord. Our celebrant for today's liturgy is Father Christie. He is assisted by Deacon Guido. At this Mass, we especially remember Margaret Bozar. Please remember in prayer those who are sick, Ryan Wallace, Shelley Green, Jerry Michael, and those who have died, Stephen Riley, Carl Newver. My brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of His Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that He entered His own city of Jerusalem, Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may also share in his resurrection and his life. Let us pray. I ask you please to raise your palm branches. Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we may, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation 
may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and disciples drew near Jerusalem to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you'll find a cult tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the master has a need of it, and they will send it back here at once. So they went off and found the colt tethered at the gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered them, just as Jesus had told, uh, uh, told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread the, the cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, like the crowds who proclaim Jesus of old in Jerusalem, let us now go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. The processional hymn may be found in the hymnal number 498, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, number 498.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human weakness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, become ob becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Passion of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time, so the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, When he was in Bethany, reclining at a table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly genuine spinard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor will always be with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, Wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in her memory. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. 
Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off into the city and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one by one. Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, all of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the, co the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I, have, I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful unto death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep. Who did not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, the scribes and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew a sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area. 
Yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body, they seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief, chief priests and elders and scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself by the fire. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to find testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but the testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, saying, Even so, the testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? We remain silent and answer nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, what further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and said to him, and the gods greeted him with blows. When Peter was in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she took uh, looked intently at him and said, but he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out to the outer court, then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystander, once again he denied it. A little later, the bystander said to Peter once more, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had said to him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priest with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held the council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priest accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to, so, to, uh, for them as he was, to do so as he had, as was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him released to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, 
Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the King of the Jews? They shouted again. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted louder. So Pilate wishes to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole uh, court. They clothed him in purple and wearing a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with I kept striking his head with a, with a reed and spitting on him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father Alexander and Rufus to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine, drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The description of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priest with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. A noon darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, and at three o'clock Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard this said, One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who had stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also some women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James, and Joseph, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. 
He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had died already. And when he heard of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought him a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of rock. Then he rolled the stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So tonight, all over the church, throughout the world, we begin to meditate on the last hours of Jesus' life and enter into the drama of what we have come to call Holy Week, needing time of these days to meditate and to reflect on what happened to Jesus and what continues to happen to Jesus in us. We celebrate Holy Week not to look back devoutly or with piety about what happened a long time ago, but rather today the church is soberly calling us to see that that ancient story is our story. That is to say that it's happening right now. And all of us make choices. All of us choose how to follow the Lord or how to follow the things of the world. We know our compromises, we know our weaknesses, and we know our sins. And Holy Week is a sober examination of conscience where we meditate and think about and pray with Jesus about what he accomplished when he went to the cross and how he's still willing to do it in our lives today. Every life is going to experience pain and suffering. There's no way around it. Human beings are always looking for a way to resolve that problem, sometimes thinking we can find it if we get the right book or go to the right seminar. Some people imagine if I just um, meet the right people, meet the right person to fill the pain in my heart. Some people imagine that I can numb myself with drugs or alcohol, sexual pleasures, gambling, buying too much. We all are looking for ways to cover up our pain. Jesus dramatically shows us in his last hours of life that it wasn't by avoiding the pain of his life, but it was by entering into it. And every Christian life from the time of Jesus until this very moment, we discover life when we enter into the pain, the frustrations, the sufferings of our life. And so you see, it really is our story. And we see in the gospel today how so many people chose to deal with that in their own way. Pilate washed his hand of it. He didn't want to deal with it. The crowd, we could be the crowd. You know, do you want Jesus who multiplied the loaves and healed the sick and walked on water, forgave the sinner? Do you want him or do you want a convicted killer? And they all screamed Barabbas. Why did they do that? At the beginning of the mass today, we all, they were all shouting Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. How fickle is the human heart. But it's not for us to have a derisive head shake about what people did in the past, but we can do it too. We can give up on Jesus. We like the Jesus who is comforting and who is welcoming and who invites us to life and life eternal, comforts us, gives us consolation, but the Jesus who calls us to take up our cross and follow after him, 
Maybe it's by attending to a difficult teaching of the church. That's Jesus too. Attending to his teachings of marriage, life, and especially life in the womb. The way that we're created in God's image and likeness, giving us sexuality from God. All of those teachings which have been politicized, right or left in our world, there's the voice of Jesus. And when we abandon that, we abandon him. We don't want to say that, but it's true. And so you see, this is our story. Are we going to enter into the story and take responsibility for our Christian life? Or will it be easier to fade into the crowd and say, well, I wasn't sure. I didn't know. I didn't like it. I didn't want that. But you see, Holy Week is really about love. What Jesus came to do was to solidify the love of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with each one of us. He came to show us that suffering is not the end of the story, but it's to end in glory. You and I are destined for Easter and for resurrection and for greater things. We're supposed to shine like the light of the sun. We're supposed to be the salt of the earth and the light to the world. And we do that by letting ourselves die with him and so we can rise with him. Somebody in your life needs your witness. Somebody who's not here today, somebody who's weak is faith, whose faith is weak, somebody who's given up, they need you to be a witness to Jesus' love. And it often means entering into their suffering and into their pain. May we follow Jesus more faithfully. And as we travel through this holy week, may we discover new and fresh Jesus' great abiding love for each one of us. And may we be willing to give him everything and so that we may die and rise with him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. As humble servants, we pray now in the name of Jesus for the needs of our church and the whole world. For the whole church, united with one heart and voice to escort our Savior with palms and praise to the holy city as he enters to meet his painful destiny, that we may follow him faithfully to the end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all individuals, groups, and nations, that they may come to true repentance and that true peace may be restored through the Master's redemption. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who bear the role of prophet in the church, 
But with a master, they may have a well-trained ear and words that can rouse the weary and never turn back in the face of persecution. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the courage to look long and steady at our crucified God, who is speaking his, his uh, whole speaking his whole word, word, a redeeming solidarity and humble divine love in the pain-filled silence of his cross. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed loved ones, and especially for Margaret Vosar, for whom this Mass is offered, that Jesus that Jesus may soon share, they may all share an eternal hap in the background. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the petitions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of eternal glory, you anointed Jesus as your servant to bear our sins to encourage the weary, to raise up and restore the fallen. Seal our lives with the virtues of humility and obedience. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. There will be two collections this weekend, a regular tithing offering and the second collection for the annual retirement for diocesan clergy. The proceeds from this collection will be designated exclusively the support of the Maria Regina residents for retired diocesan priests. The baskets will be passed twice. Thank you for your continued support and generosity.
pray. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Granted, we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis of Assisi and our patron saints, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon can be found uh, right inside the back cover of your worship aid. Thank you. 
United with our Lord, let us pray the Anima Christi. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, conceal me. Do not permit me to be parted from you. From the evil foe, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you to praise you with all your saints forever and ever. Amen. O sacred banquet in which Christ is received, the memory of his passion is renewed, the mind is filled with grace, and a pledge of future glory is given to us. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. We have a couple of announcements. Um, this uh, week we invite you to enter into the week with us. Uh, if you can, please come to daily Mass. Each of the days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, leading up to Holy Week, the readings are so rich and it's so special to unite with other believers uh, to remember who we are and who we're called to be. So I invite you please to come. On Tuesday afternoon at 4 o'clock we'll have the uh, the Chrism Mass, Bishop Shekia will consecrate all the oils for the sacraments for our diocese. The priests will recommit themselves to their, their, um, their, their priestly uh, promises. So we appreciate your prayers. I know it's at an awkward time of the day at four o'clock, but if you can come and be part of it, it would be wonderful if you could be here uh, to celebrate that special Mass. Um, this coming Saturday is um, Holy Saturday, and there are no sacraments celebrated on that day as the ancient practice of the church. So we won't have morning Mass that day, nor confessions, but we'll have the great Easter vigil uh, that will begin at, um, I think it's 8 o'clock, yeah, it's, it moves, but I think it's 8 o'clock this year. The Lady Chapel will also be closed starting on Holy Thursday, and it will reopen on April 4th, so there'll be some days that um, the chapel uh, will not be open for us, and the parish office as well from Holy Thursday, uh, and will reopen on Tuesday. Though All that information is in the bulletin, but just know that we have a little bit of a different schedule here. Um, just want to encourage all of you, thank you for being here. This is, uh, it's very sobering to hear the passion. Maybe uh, you could um, spend time talking to your children about it, praying about it. Um, there's great movies to watch about it, Jesus of Nazareth, The Passion of the Christ. I think The Chosen is uh, not there yet. My understanding is season four only leads up to, the, uh, to where the uh, entry into Jerusalem comes. But this is our special week. Um, and we have to know that Jesus does it because he loves us. It's a love story. It's painful, but it's about love. So go forth knowing that you were bought at a high price and the Lord loves you dearly and he wants you to share that love with others. Yeah. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Be to God. The recessional hymn can be found at the end of your program, Soul of My Savior.